Urban Tao Overflows. Today I am looking into the life of Swami Vivekanand. Swami Vivekanand was born on 12th of January 1863 in an aristocratic Bengali family in Kolkata. His father Vishnath Dutta was attorney at High Court. His mother was Bhubaneshwari Devi and she said that she prayed to Shiva for a son and he had sent me his demon. Vivekanand, his name was Narendranath Dutta. From the very childhood, he was very mischievous and very intelligent. His father was a lawyer. So in his office, people will come from different religious backgrounds. So he have four standing smoking pipes that is known as in Hindi language hookah. So Narend asked his father why they have four. He said there are people from different religious background, Hindu, Muslim, Christian. So we do not want to mix up. That's why we have the four, the standing smoking pipes. One day it happened, father was not there and Narend entered his office and he started smoking all the four smoke pipes. So his father came, he said, what are you doing? And Narend's stern reply was that I am looking into by smoking from a Muslim or a Christian smoke pipe how my religion can change. Such was his thinking from his early childhood. There are stories of his courage and valor during the time when he was going, growing up. He studied in Calcutta and during his college days, he studied philosophers like Kant, David Hume, Darwin, Hegel, Arthur Schopenhauer. Schopenhauer was a German and he was also very intelligent. One incident I recall from Schopenhauer, he was strolling in his garden, a child was with him, child asked a question, why are trees green? Schopenhauer could not find the answer, then looking at the child, he said, trees are green because they are green. Trees are green because they are green. The child responded, yes, I was thinking the same way. What did he do? He did not give at that age. What is the understanding of a child who is five or six years of age? If you tell him that chlorophyll and this and that, he will not be able to understand. You have to respond to the person according to the age and level of understanding of the person. So if the child inquires much deeper, then you can answer him in a different way. At that level, child's understanding was the same. That trees are green because they are green. I recall when I came to Trinidad, my sister-in-law had a son who was five years old and very intelligent. 
One day he asked his father how children are born. Now he is an adult, he knows, but he did not know how to communicate the child at that age, how children are born. He could not answer. So I was observing this, so I called him. I said, you want to know how children are born? He said, yes, uncle. So I asked him, what is your favorite subject? in school so he said my favorite subject is agriculture but that happens only once in a week so I said what you do so he said so I am extracting out of him how to respond he said the the teacher comes for the class he said children in agriculture class we are preparing a flower pot so how do you prepare the flower pot he said, we take the flower pot, empty flower pot, take the soil, mix up with fertilizer, the, the manure, and put it in the flower pot, and then some water. After that, by then the bell rings, and we all have to leave and wait for until the next week. So what you do next week? Then the teacher will come in, and you will say, we are going to plant a seed. I said, how do you do that? So he said, the teacher will tell us to make a hole in the flower pot, in the soil, and then we plant the seed in it, and then bell rings. So we wait. So I said, exactly like that, children are born. Fathers have the seed, just as the teacher brought the seed. You all did not have the seed. So fa father had the seed, and mother is the flower pot. And she has the fertile soil so father plant the seed in the soil of the mother and children grow just like plant grows and then flowers starts blossoming so children are born that way so um, then Schopenhauer August Kant and not only he learned the Western philosophers and thinkers instead he learned the Sanskrit literature, the scriptures, and also he learned the Bengali literature as well. At one time, there was a paper called Pickwick Papers, and he read two or three passages verbatim. This shocked everyone. He was a person of prodigious memory, a kind of a mirror memory. And he was a fast reader. At one time it happened, Swami Vivekananda was um, talking to a Swedish person. So he mentioned something about Swedish history. So the person disagreed. But thereafter the Swede investigated and he found that Vivekananda was right. So many incidents like this, once it happened that in Kiev, in Germany, um, Dr. Professor Dusen, he was uh, trying to draw the attention of Vivekananda, talking to him, but Vivekananda was reading something and he could not answer. Thereafter, he, ans he responded to him and apologized and explained the passage from the Wordsworth's poem, Wordsworth's poem, the, the I forget, I, you know, the excursions and he gave the example and explanation of that that surprised him many incidents are like that once he went to the library and he asked the librarian for the books of sir john lubbock so he took a couple books very next day he returned the book so the librarian asked did you read the book he said yes i read it so he was surprised to the librarian that how could he read all these books which are very difficult in such a short period of time. So he cross-examined him and after cross-examining he found that Vivekananda was correct. And he was another incident he was traveling in a ship or a boat. So a gentleman had that was somewhere in the west. So he 
the person had a newspaper so Vivekanand asked him to borrow the newspaper and he read it and it so happened with the strong breeze the newspaper blew and it fell in the ocean so the man got angry that I have bought the newspaper and I can't get another copy and I haven't read it so Vivekanand very meekly asked him do you have a notebook and a pen and he wrote the entire newspaper what was the news and such was the mirror memory of Vivekanand the in 18 when he went to the college there was the principal his name was hasty and he said Vivekanand is a unique an extraordinary lad and he is far beyond in, in his intelligence than the Westerner, Western students. In 1881 Vivekanand met Ramakrishna for the first time. It was the assembly uh, institution where Professor William Hasty was speaking on Wordsworth poem, The Excursions, a word came in trance. He told all the students, if you want to know the real meaning of the word trance, you should go to Dakshineshwar where Ramakrishna on the bank of river Hugli. There Hugli is the name in Kolkata for the river Ganga. So he and then 1884 Vivekanand had eight or nine siblings. In 1884 his father passed away. Then there was he was the eldest. There was a problem of the marriage of the sisters. There was no income and so so he went for the first time to Ram Krishna and there he went with the intention to get the financial status improved upon but Ram Krishna said how long have you been we kept me waiting the incident before that was Ram Vivekanand used to sing very good so once Ram Krishna came to Kolkata and Vivekanand sang something for him. So that time Ram Krishna told very lovingly the words echo in my ears still Naren ek din Dakshineshwar au na the word the way it was said au na Naren ek din Dakshineshwar au na when we speak this is a kind of a um, the modulation of the sentence which gives a deeper meaning Narin, come someday to Dakshineshwar come someday to Dakshineshwar so he remembered those words in 1884 when his father passed away he went to Dakshineshwar and Ram Krishna said Narin, you have kept me waiting for so long so he mentioned of his problems and so he said, go, Mother Kali is waiting for you. He went to the temple and he asked the boon, Mom, Mother, give me Vivek, the indiscriminating intellect, intelligence, intelligence and renunciation. He sent him another time, but again Narin forget what he was to ask. Then he sent him the third time and again he forgot. So Ram Krishna said, I bless you that you will not have any financial problems from now onwards. These are some of the gems that I have preserved in my repertoire and I can go on and on speaking on this. I thought in one session I would be able to speak. But entire life is not enough to speak on one master, enough for today.